I've spent the last 15 years of my life in the marketing trenches, doing anything and everything from planning marketing campaigns, creating ads, hosting ribbon cuttings, uh, sending out countless press releases, creating logos, launching websites, coordinating photo shoots, and even hiring a sign flipper. Yeah, that was an interesting interview. And if you stick around, I'll tell you why it was a terrible idea. As a small business owner, you know that marketing isn't optional. It is essential and it can't be an afterthought. It has to be a consistent focus, which is why in this video, I want to share with you my 15 years of marketing experience through various marketing roles and give you the cliff notes. So that way you can just bypass all of that trial and error and get to the really good stuff, the stuff that's really going to grow your business. Don't neglect the boring but effective marketing initiatives. I get it, stuff like email marketing isn't sexy, but it is hella effective. And so if you are just focusing on the nice, new, shiny marketing opportunities, like let's say influencer marketing or social media marketing, and you're not giving any thought to some of the more traditional marketing opportunities, like let's say billboard advertising, direct mailers, or even print ads in like local community magazines, well, you may be missing out on some really great opportunities. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, well, Vivian, there is no way that I could possibly take into consideration every single marketing opportunity out there. Yes, you are correct, which is why you have to allow your target audience to drive the list of opportunities that you are considering. So if you know your target audience really well, which every single one of you should, you should know their patterns, their habits, and also the places where you can find them. And if you know that, then that is going to be the thing that you rely on to guide you and to determine which opportunities you should want to consider investing money in. Why do you think Medicare plans who are targeting individuals who are 65 years and up still heavily invest most of their marketing budget into direct mail campaigns, i.e. postcards? It's because they know that's what works for the individuals that they are looking to target. Now, here's the thing. They could easily invest money into text marketing, and they probably have tried to do so, but it may not garner them the same results as the old school postcards do. So they are catering to their target audience because that is where the money's at. Focusing on only new customers is detrimental. It is always going to be more expensive for you to bring a new customer into your small business than it is for you to sell to an existing customer. I highly encourage you that you make a list of all of the current marketing initiatives that you are doing for your small business. Divide that list up into the ones that target new customers and the ones that target existing customers. If you find that you are predominantly just focusing on new customers and you're not paying attention to existing customers or doing anything to bring them back in for reoccurring sales, then you may want to shift some of those initiatives onto that existing customer column because you never want to be lopsided. You never want to give all of the attention to your new customers and not send communication or promotions to existing customers. They've already purchased from you. They're already primed and ready to go in the probability of them coming back for a repeat purchase, especially if they've had a really good experience, is going to be exponentially higher. Focusing only on new customers means that you are leaving money on the table. Now, pro tip here, in order for you to be able to continue to communicate with existing customers, that means that you have to have a database of customer information, meaning either you have to have their email address, their mailing address, or their cell phone number so that you could send them text. If you haven't started to collect that type of information, then think through how you can start to do that as soon as possible. Or if you are collecting that information, but it's just sitting there, if you have an email list that's getting dusty and you're not using it to send weekly or monthly communication to existing customers, then consider figuring out a way just to start reaching back out to them because consistent communication is going to be what allows you to nurture a relationship so that you stay top of mind whenever they need your product or service again. Don't undervalue consistency. 
Speaking of consistent communication, in marketing, consistency is half the battle. And this goes for whether it's the way you are showing up on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or sending out email communication to existing customers, or even running ads. Consistency is is gonna be the one thing that makes it effective. I can tell you from personal experience that when you do something consistently in a marketing campaign, it always gives you a much higher ROI or return on investment. Take for example, something as simple as billboard ads. You could easily do billboard ads for a month. Now, will that potentially, you know, give you a return on investment? Will you make some sales or get people, you know, to come into your boutique? Absolutely. But what would be better is to actually run that billboard campaign for three to four months. Doesn't mean you have to use the same ads. You can switch out the designs, but the consistency of you showing up over that elongated period of time is going to exponentially increase your sales or your foot traffic. This goes for anything, including social media marketing. So the one thing that you can do as a small business owner that is handling your marketing internally is to master consistency. All right, so create good habits that will allow you to stick with things for a while. Sending an email once every three months is not going to be as good as sending an email once a week or on a monthly basis. Give your marketing campaigns enough time to work. The biggest mistake that people make with their marketing is that they are either unrealistic or impatient when it comes to the length of time that they think it's going to take to get their desired results. And unfortunately, they end up pulling some really good marketing initiatives way too soon, leaving their efforts wasted. Now, the recommended length of time for each marketing channel, marketing initiative, or advertising channel is going to vary obviously. And it's not just based on the channel that you're using, let's say Facebook ads, but it also has a little more nuance to it. So let's take, for example, if you want to run Facebook ads and you're a boutique owner. Now you just opened up your clothing boutique in a certain community. It is likely going to take you a little more time to gear up and to see some of that foot traffic come in from the Facebook ads simply because for one, you're starting from zero from ground level, right? Nobody knows you in the community quite yet because you just opened your store. That is completely different than let's say a chain restaurant who has a big name attached to it, is very well known in the community. And let's say that they're running an ad for, you know, kids eat free on Fridays. That probably isn't going to take as much time to get primed up and get the desired results as the boutique owner who has just opened up because of those other factors, because they're already well known and well established, and also because the type of campaign they're running is a little different. My recommendation is that if you have a sales rep that is helping you with a campaign or has signed your contract for particular ads, that you go back and you ask them for advice or just flat out ask them, say, what other business in my industry has run a similar campaign and about how long did it take for them to see their desired results? Now, they're not going to give you the full details as far as how much money they've spent and all of that, but they could tell you, well, it usually takes about three to four months of consistent advertising with this channel in order to get X, Y, and Z results. The pro tip here is that if some of your marketing campaigns just aren't doing what you think they should be doing, so they're not performing as well, go back in and evaluate how many campaigns you're running total. What may be happening is you may have decided to do a little bit of everything and you're not giving things enough time to fully gain traction because you're spread too thin. And so what you may wanna do is reevaluate and see, can I pare some of these down and instead of spreading myself too thin and having my hand in too many pots, let me consolidate some of this. So maybe mark off one or two of the campaigns that you're currently doing, take that money and reinvest it into some of the other campaigns that you have. So that way it gives you a bigger budget to work with. So if you're doing 
billboard, print ads, uh, postcards, and Facebook ads, and you find that your Facebook ads just aren't performing well, well then maybe decide not to do billboard and take the money that you were using for billboards to reinvest back into the print ads, postcards, and Facebook ads. That will allow you to extend the length of time that you're working on those other initiatives. Don't prioritize what's convenient for you, prioritize what's convenient for them. And by them, I mean your target audience, the people that want your product and service. So let me give you a perfect example of this. Back when I graduated from the University of South Carolina, my first job out of college was going to work for the local chamber of commerce. Now I was their director of membership development, which meant that my role was to um, bring people, businesses into the Chamber of Commerce and also help them while they were there with resources. Now, one of the predicaments that we had at the time was in the town that I lived in, there was a downtown area, but it hadn't been revitalized yet. So while you saw some foot traffic, some of the small businesses were really struggling to get people through their doors. So they came to the chamber, they were telling us what their issues were. And of course the chamber was asking questions. They wanted to assess the situation. One of the basic questions that we asked was, what are your operating hours? Well, what we found out was that for some of these small business owners, they were only open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., which are typical normal hours of operation. However, if you are a clothing boutique and you are targeting women, specifically working women who are at their jobs from eight to five, that doesn't exactly give them an opportunity to come into the boutique to shop. And so the rub there was that they had operating hours that worked well for the small business owner. However, it didn't work well for their target audience, the people that were gonna come in and spend money with them. Now, back then, online shopping wasn't what it is today. In order for them to be able to accommodate for their target audience, they would essentially maybe have to have later open hours and then stay open you know, maybe until 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. You wanna make it as easy as possible for people to do business with you because there are so many more options out there today. This can look like anything as small as, you know, making sure that your website is mobile friendly, reducing the amount of clicks it takes for someone to get to that payment screen, or even just having your hours listed on your Google business profile. Free marketing isn't free. When we think of certain marketing opportunities, like let's say social media marketing, or perhaps even participating in a free community event to promote our small business, we often make the mistake of thinking, oh, well, if I'm not coming out of pocket for it and they're not charging me for it, then it's free. It's not. Every single marketing initiative has a cost associated with it. And even if it's not a monetary cost, like you're not paying you know, $100 to participate in an event, even if you're not doing that, it is still either costing you resources or time. You need to be able to determine whether it is worth your time and effort to do that free event. Same thing with Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, all of that. So let me give you a perfect example of this. In my day job, I work for a large healthcare organization and we were invited to attend a health fair that was free to the community and free to the vendors that wanted to go. And so they asked if we wanted to be a vendor. Now this was put on by the YMCA and it was very specific to older residents, okay? So people who were typically 50s on up. We were there with a bunch of other vendors and one of those vendors was a Taekwondo studio. Now, when I was watching them throughout the event, we were out there for approximately four hours and they had zero people, like barely anybody who went over there to talk to them or to find out more about their Taekwondo studio. And so they didn't get anybody to sign up for their classes. Now, if I were that Taekwondo studio owner and the YMCA approached me the following year to participate in the same event, I would flat out tell them no because the event was not a good fit for my studio. However, I would go back and say, do you happen to have a similar event that is perhaps targeted at children? 
because that is likely going to generate more interest. Families that are coming by and maybe children that have a lot of energy and they need a place to put that energy, then Taekwondo classes would be really great. But my main point being that just because that event was free for the Taekwondo studio owner did not mean that it was a good use of his time. Make tracking data your new BFF. The only way to know if something is working or not is by tracking data. And trust me, I know it better than anybody out there. Sometimes when it comes to marketing, this can be extremely tricky. But what I've found is that most of the time, if you're struggling to attach numbers to a marketing initiative, it's likely because you're not being creative enough. So let me give you a perfect example of this. Back in 2023, uh, the season marketer, my small business, we decided to participate in a local event this was during Christmas time and it's called Christmas in the Square. Basically, they take the downtown area, they divide it into 10 by 10 parcels and they allow small business owners to come in and essentially rent these parcels. You can do whatever you want with that space to promote your small business and to decorate it for Christmas time. And it draws a lot of families out for those couple of weeks when the displays are up. So we thought it was a great opportunity to promote the Season Marketer as a marketing resource hub. Now, how were we going to figure out if truly our display was effective? Well, what we decided to do was to build a Barbie box of swords that people could take a photo op in. Now, next to the Barbie box, we had a yard sign on that yard sign, it had a QR code that could be scanned. That QR code then led them to a very specific landing page that I created for this particular event. And it was one where they could join our email list. So now what I had was I had QR code downloads that I could see how many people actually scanned the code. And to take it one step further, I could see how many small business owners actually signed up for our mailing list. It took a little bit of thinking outside the box, but there was a way for us to get data to be able to track and see if that was an event that we wanted to do again the following year. And spoiler alert, it worked extremely well. We were very happy with the number. So we are going to participate again this year. Now I do want to mention that some of the more common data points that people look at to gauge whether their marketing works are things like impressions, open rates, click-through rates, views, and reach. If this is a topic that you think I should cover more about in a future video, go ahead and let me know down in the comments. Write and speak at the level of your target audience. Communication is such an important aspect of marketing that you need to be sure that you are writing and speaking at the level of your target audience. So let's take, for example, if you are a primary care physician and your target audience is the general public, right? So you are looking to drive new patients into your primary care practice. Well, then you would want to ensure that your communication is at a sixth grade reading level because that is what best practice is for general public. Now, if you're that same primary care physician, but your target audience is not not the general public and instead it's other physicians because let's say you launched a course and you're helping other primary care physicians figure out how to best run their practice well then your verbiage your tone your written communication and style is all going to change because your target audience dictates that while it's typically not intentional, sometimes what happens is that people will use industry jargon in marketing collateral that's geared towards a public audience. And then the person reading it has absolutely no clue what they're talking about because it's not something that's very well known. Let's take a car mechanic who is running a Facebook ad to try to drive people into his shop to check for their air conditioning before it gets really, really hot during the summertime. Running an ad that says, let us recharge your refrigerant before summer is not going to be quite as effective as get your AC ready for summer. Let us top off your coolant or something like that, because most people probably do not know what a refrigerant is in their car or what it actually does. So just be sure that you're checking your ads, your communication and all of your marketing collateral 
to ensure that it is at a reading and speaking level of your target audience. Automation can help you exponentially. Remember earlier I told you that consistency plays a huge role in the effectiveness of your marketing. Well, the good news is that in 2024, there are so many opportunities where you can automate this consistency, okay? So what I recommend is that you go in and you find opportunities to automate certain processes that will help you stay consistent with your marketing initiatives. Take, for example, something like ManyChat. So people are using ManyChat in order to automate sending DMs to their Instagram audience that may be interested in a particular uh, course or a particular freebie that they're offering. Additionally, platforms like BirdEye are out there that can help you to automate your Google reviews. So if that's something that's extremely important to your business, let's say that you're a restaurant and you wanna be sure that you get adequate Google reviews, well, having an automated system like a BirdEye is going to ensure that you're collecting those for every single patron that comes to your restaurant. Email platforms like OmniSend can help you with sending out consistent communication. So whether that be typing up your emails ahead of time and then scheduling them for future release dates or even using them for SMS, for text marketing. If you're feeling the strain on any particular part of your process when it comes to a marketing initiative, go out there and check to see if there's a tool, resource, or platform that can help you automate the process. Marketing is more than a logo, font, and brand colors. Now, before you come for me, don't misunderstand me. Your logo, your font, and your brand colors are extremely important because they are a representation of your small business. However, they shouldn't be your entire focus. There are plenty of businesses out there that I have seen get by with really bad logos, but they do everything else right in their marketing and then they go back and they redesign and rebrand when they can and when they have the funds to do so. My point being is that if you are so focused and stressed about the aesthetics of your small business that it is preventing you from showing up, from just getting some of the basic marketing done, then you are doing a disservice to the people out there who really need your products or services. Take advantage of free tools like Canva, which have a lot of preloaded templates in there that you could go in and customize until you have the opportunity to maybe hire or outsource it to a graphic designer, to someone who can give you a more polished look. Also, don't let it keep you from running ads. So a little pro tip here, but a lot of the billboard companies, magazines, newspapers, and even television stations have people that are really good at this stuff. They hire graphic designers on their team to be able to offer this as a free service most of the time for small business owners who don't have someone who can put together and add a commercial or whatever else. You need both paid and organic marketing. According to the latest data, it's taking about seven to eight touch points for somebody to open up their wallet and spend money with you. So what that means is that we are in a oversaturated marketplace. There's a lot of competition out there, not just for your particular business, but for people's overall attention. Okay, so think about it, whether it's streaming services, whether it's our phones and these apps that we have on the phone, or it's podcast or YouTube, there is a lot out there for people to consume. And so we can no longer get by with thinking that we can run one ad and then someone's going to spend money with us. It's going to take multiple touch points before we convince them or convert them into a customer. That means that there is a role both for organic and paid marketing. The organic marketing is going to be more of the information and content based marketing. So whether that be a blog that you have integrated into your website so that you can start to get views onto your website from the blog or perhaps showing up on Instagram or even creating YouTube videos like this one. And while initiatives like these take up more time, you're not dumping a lot of money into it. However, if you spend your efforts on just one or the other, what happens over time is it means that 
you're kind of negating some of the other opportunities you have. For example, if you're doing the organic marketing, you're focusing more on maybe the social media and all of that good stuff. But that doesn't mean that there isn't value in you trying some of the other advertising avenues that you have available. That can help you drive sales and gain more traction because you are paying in order to do that. Let's also recognize the fact that just recently, Facebook released tiered programs for small business owners to be able to get more eyes on their content. All right, that means that some of this organic marketing that we used to not pay for is now going to start to move over to this paid advertising because it's gonna be a pay to play type of deal. So just know that in order to have a healthy bottom line, you should be integrating both of these into your small business. You're looking for a relationship, not a sale. This slight mindset shift can make all the difference in the way that you present your offerings, in the way that your marketing material comes off, and also in the way that people view your small business. Now, what it does is it allows you, remember earlier we talked about how you don't just primarily wanna focus on new customers, but you also want to focus on existing customers. This mindset shift allows you to do just that because instead of looking at a new customer as a one-time transaction, you're thinking about the long-term relationship with them because you want them coming back to buy from your business, whether that be three months down the line, six months down the line, or a year down the line. And by focusing on that long-term relationship, you are then willing to invest a little more time and effort into their experience with that first sale or that first transaction. The pro tip here is do a little math. As a small business owner, you need to know two very important numbers. One of them is how much on average it takes you to bring a new customer in. And the other one is on average, how much a new customer is worth to you. And what I mean by that is how much money do they spend with you over an elongated period of time? Let's say, for example, I'm a guitar teacher and my lessons are about $100 to $200 on average per lesson. But by looking at historical data, I know that for every new student that comes in, on average, they'll spend $2,000 with me in that first year. The way that I treat a potential new student that is going to spend on average $2,000 with me is gonna be very different than the way I treat someone that I think is just gonna come in for one or two lessons. So having this information helps for you to shape your mindset so that you are focused on keeping that customer happy. Additionally, what happens from there is don't forget referrals. That's where a lot of referrals come in is if you are doing your best to ensure that they are satisfied and having a good experience with your product and service, then they're gonna go out there and share that with others. Targeted focus will get you better, quicker results. If you're trying to be present on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, LinkedIn, X, and YouTube, and you feel like you're not gaining any traction on any one of those, it's because you've spread yourself too thin and you're not concentrating your efforts. In marketing, the name of the game is to focus on your target audience and to concentrate your efforts so that you could gain more traction quicker. Remember earlier, I touched on the idea that if you have too many marketing initiatives going on and your time frame is really short because of that, so you're doing a little bit of everything, but you're not doing it long enough to gain any traction, well then I recommended that you go back and you eliminate some of those initiatives and then reinvest those monies into just a handful of the ones that you really wanted to focus on. It's the same thing. Quit copying the big dogs. It is really great to draw inspiration from others and I think that's the natural thing to do, especially when we're spending so much time on some of these platforms and information is so readily accessible to us. But you need to be careful that you are not comparing your marketing efforts as a small business owner with a limited staff and a tight budget to a large corporation that has deep, deep pockets and a plethora of people working for them. 
Additionally, every business is different and they're at a different part of their business cycle. And so if you are looking at what someone else is doing and you're wanting to emulate that, to copy it, to transition it into something that you do for your small business, you don't know where they're at in their business cycle. And so some of the initiatives that they're doing may not be beneficial or as beneficial to your small business. Every business is different, and so what works for one isn't necessarily going to work for another. You remember at the very beginning of this video when I mentioned to you that I had to hire a sign flipper? Yeah, one of these people. Well, at the time, I was working for two former ER physicians, and they had opened up their own urgent care center. They flew out for a convention out in California, and when they came back, they gave me the initiative of hiring a sign flipper for the urgent care center because they had seen a sandwich shop in California do it, and they thought it was a really great idea because it attracted a lot of people into the sandwich shop. Well, healthcare doesn't exactly work the same way. Okay, you don't, you don't drive past an urgent care center and think, oh yeah, I've been meaning to be seen for my broken leg, so let me just pop in there. It works very differently, and the people that are seeking health care are not going to stop into an urgent care center just because they see a sign flipper out there and are reminded that an urgent care center is located in that facility. Regardless of how many times I tried to talk them out of it, I still had to go through with the interview and actually hire a sign flipper. So that made for a very, very weird interview where I essentially asked somebody to show me some dance moves and I didn't even have a sign for them to utilize. So I had to ask them to pretend, hold a sign and dance at the same time. I hired somebody and needless to say i think that lasted all of about one month and to say the least it turned out exactly how i imagined it turning out hey if you're an sob small loan business stick around and watch this next video right here